Hey guys, happy Friday and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest network and information security stories each week and to hopefully sharing some practical security tips along the way. I'm your host and all-around security geek, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for August 18th, 2014. So this week's episode will have a breach theme as all three stories have to do with important breaches that came out during the week. Let's start with a big, allegedly Chinese breach that stole 4.5 million health records. According to a posting from a, a health organization called Community Health System, uh, their organization that manages patient records, Chinese-based attackers had stolen a lot of patient data from them. And it's interesting to note they've focused more on the patient's private data, not really their medical data in this particular case. Now they don't share a lot about how it happened other than characterizing it as an advanced persistent threat or APT. They say it uses the techniques that you see in a lot of these other alleged Chinese advanced attacks. Now one thing that did come out is what these bad guys stole and that would be your name, your birthday, your, your telephone number, your address, and more importantly your social security number. This is a very big piece of information uh, that bad guys can use for identity theft. So it is big to anybody that might be affected by this breach. Now later in the week, another security organization called Trusted Sec alleged that an insider told them that the breach may have had something to do with the heart bleed vulnerability. This of course was a flaw in OpenSSL where by sending specially crafted packets to a server or client, you could steal information from memory and perhaps even steal a full SSL certificate, which would allow you to break the SSL encryption. And TrustedSec said the bad guys used this to get certificates from a Juniper device, which allowed them to VPN and steal the information. So what can we learn from this? Well, first of all, if you haven't patched Heartbleed yet, you better get to it. You know, there's a ton of devices and, and products that use OpenSSL, so make sure you've patched all those products. And of course, if you're a WatchGuard customer, we released patches for this long ago. The other thing you might consider, while we don't know how the attack happened, it might have involved uh, phishing emails, and I'll talk more about that soon. And finally, uh, you might also pay attention to letters from this community health system organization. Apparently the breach affected over 200 hospitals in 20 plus states, so you'll probably get a letter if your information was stolen, and if so you might want to monitor credit agencies to watch for identity theft. The next breach I'll cover involves a U.S. nuclear organization. Now before you freak out, it wasn't a U.S. power plant, uh, nothing's going to blow up. However, according to a story from NextGov, three different organizations, two of them uh, allegedly foreign organizations and one an unidentified private organization, have attacked the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, or NRC, over the past three years. Now the NRC hasn't shared a ton of data about these breaches, such as what was stolen, but you can imagine the, the sensitive content NRC might have. Obviously they know the location of many U.S. nuclear facilities. They probably know things like employees, uh, how the facilities work, what they run on, and things like that. All sensitive data that, that nation states could certainly use for attacks and or to steal intellectual property. In any case, what's interesting to me about these breaches is how they're happening. And it kind of shows you a trend you need to pay attention to. In all three cases, these attackers used phishing to try to get employees to do things bad. More specifically, they used spear phishing. You all know what phishing is. It's when a bad guy sends an email to try to get one of your users to do something they shouldn't. Spear phishing, of course, is much more targeted. This is where the email is very well written and customized to particular groups or users. In one of these attacks, for instance, the bad guy sent over 200 emails to employees at the company, and the emails seemed like a company email. They tried to get the, the employee to follow a link that went to a Microsoft SkyDrive, a file locker, which seems kind of legitimate, and they try to get the employee to share some information in a shared uh, a spreadsheet document. So you can see how these might trick uh, unsuspecting employees into sharing things like credentials and things they shouldn't. In another case, by the way, the attacker actually hijacked one of the NRC employees' personal accounts. So maybe it was a Gmail account. And once they hijacked that account, they found that the personal addresses to other 16 other employees, and then they send a malicious email 
email to those 16 employees that contained a PDF document that used a JavaScript vulnerability to infect those employees with malware as well. And the other uh, incident involved phishing as well. So the main point here to notice is phishing, or more specifically spear phishing, is really growing as a trend. Rather than sending uh, emails, badly written emails, with malicious executable attachments, bad guys are sending targeted, well-written emails with either links or documents that infect our users. So my takeaway to you is you probably need to update your phishing training. You may have had some sort of phishing awareness training at your organization, and you've told people to look for weirdly written emails, be careful of some weird links in the emails. If the email seems general and not customized to you, it's probably bulk email, so ignore it, and those sorts of tips. What we need to do is update those tips because spear phishing is quite different. With spear phishing, it might look targeted directly from to you. It might sound like it comes from your organization. It might contain a document that actually looks like something that belongs in the email. So they need to know, your employees need to know that links can be very dangerous and they need to be very wary of documents, even if they seem to come from the company themselves. And finally, we also need to uh, use some advanced threat protection, but I'll talk about that in my next story. So let's end with a breach that may affect you directly. During the week, UPS actually let the world know and warned its customers that they suffered a network breach and bad guys stole some of their data. More specifically, they said that malware got uh, infected uh, 51 of their store locations in 20 some states. And this malware was able to steal sensitive customer information, things like your name, your email address, your normal address, but most important of all, payment information, things like your credit card and all the transactions you did at that particular store. So this is a pretty big breach if it affects you. Now the good news is it did just affect 51 of their stores. It really only infected about 1% of their organization. Now if you'd like to know if you're affected, be sure to check the blog post associated with this video because I'll, I'll post a link where UPS shares the specific stores that were affected and the time periods where the bad guys were actually stealing data. In any case, uh, while UPS warned about this, they didn't really share a ton of details about how the breach might have happened. Now, I could guess that phishing email might have been involved, but in any case, the one thing they did say was the particular malware that infected their system was missed by antivirus, their traditional antivirus solutions. And this is an important trend and takeaway you should think about. A lot of the attacks today, not just the nation state advanced attacks, but the normal cyber criminal attacks are getting more advanced. And one of the ways they're doing that is using malware evasion techniques. There's all kinds of different techniques bad guys can use to make the same piece of malware, malware they've used before that we've seen in the research community before, they make it look different on a binary level as it passes through security devices. And that's why a lot of malware gets past uh, uh, AV that relies too much on signatures. And that's why I strongly believe today you need some sort of advanced threat protection solution for advanced malware. Malware. One option is WatchGuard's APT blocker. We run a sandbox and we actually, when we get new things, whether they be files or more importantly, if they're like documents or PDFs that you might get in these spear phishing emails, we're going to actually open these files in a sandbox in a perfectly emulated victim system. And rather than looking for a specific signature, we pay attention to all the behaviors this file does to see whether or not it's malicious. Long story short, things like WatchGuard's APT blocker or other advanced malware sandboxes can catch zero-day malware that AV, signature-based AV misses. So it's an important thing to think about. In any case, it's another pretty big breach. If you are a UPS customer that uses various stores, you definitely want to check out their link to see if your store was infected. And if so, you might want to change your credit cards. So that's it for this week. I hope you found it informative. But as always, there was a ton of other stories this week. There's a couple of different iOS vulnerability stories, including one that allows a link to force phone calls on your iOS device, which could lead you to paying for certain phone calls. Uh, there's also an interesting story about how researchers figured out to inject malware into legitimate downloads silently as they come down. So if you're interested in any of these other stories, be sure to check the blog post associated with this video as it has a reference section with all those links. And that blog post, of course, is at the WatchGuard Security Center blog. So be sure to subscribe there as I always post the video there and I post many other interesting security stories too. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept or you can follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech.
And just for a moment, one other aside, you may have been following the fun this week with the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge, kind of a charity thing going on for Lou Gehrig's disease. Uh, if you're interested, I did my own Ice Bucket Challenge, so stay after the credits to see how that turned out. But more importantly, if you can afford to, donate to an ALS organization of your choice. As always, thanks for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you. Hey guys, so Amber Gentry challenged me to some sort of ALS ice bucket whatchamahoo challenge. I mean, Amber, really? Do I look like a clown? I'm a grown professional businessman. I got places to go, people to meet. I ain't got no time for no ice bucket challenge. Psh, I'm going to work. Yeah. So as fun as the ice bucket challenge is, remember it's actually about a serious disease, ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. So if you can afford to, I recommend whether you do the ice bucket challenge or not, donate a little bit of money to the ALS organization of your choice. And by the way, if you know anyone with ALS, give them a little bit of your time. Or if you know anyone caring for who, or with a loved one that has ALS, give them some of your time and support because they need it as well. And on to my challenges. I challenge Justin Peterson, Brent Weir, and Alan Myslack to do the Ice Bucket Challenge. Good luck.